it's time for some brass facts. Today I'll be covering the ACOG, specifically this one which is a one of the 4x32 models. This video will be divided into three parts. The overview, where I mention the features of the optic. The observation, where I talk about things I noticed during the use of the product. And then finally, opinion. What my thoughts on the product are through my use of the product. First up, the overview. This optic needs no introduction, so I'll leave out most of its history and keep this short and get to the facts. The model I have is the TA31 RCO A4. That's quite a mouthful, so I'll quickly go over some of the naming conventions so you can have a rough idea of what you want. The best idea is to go to the Trijicon website and kind of figure it out from there. It's worth mentioning that all ACOGs, um, at least the, their fixed power variants, you are configured to a specific bullet velocity and bullet weight. What this generally refers to is the optic is configured for a specific barrel length and a specific cartridge or cartridge weight. This is a TA31 RCO, so that means it's configured for M855, or we'll go with 62 grain. The first part of the name, the TA31, refers to the housing, more or less. So in this case, TA31 means 4x32. RCO and the part afterwards, the A4, refers to this as a military version of the ACOG, configured to either the A4, that is the 16 in, or the 20 inch M16, or the M4, the 14.5 inch M4. This one is configured for a 20 inch barrel with M855, therefore TA31, RCO, A4. The TAE11, which is the 3x5x35 by by variant, uses a somewhat similar naming convention uh, with a letter after the name denoting the reticle type. But at this point, it's honestly better just to go into the Trichicon website for more detail. Otherwise, I'll be here all day talking about horrible naming conventions. End costs for these things are anywhere from about 1,000 to 1,500, though generally closer to the higher end of that. Honestly, you can get these things used quite frequently for fairly good prices. At least in the past, I've gotten a couple for 600 and 800, respectively. This one was brand new for about 1400. The ACOG is, as you might know, a simple fixed power optic with a, both a fiber optic and tritium lighting up its iconic reticle. The ACOG still boasts industry standard glass after all these years. The reticle is the famous BDC or ballistic drop compensator. What this means is different hash marks on the reticle correspond to different distances. So the, the four mark on the reticle corresponds to where the bullet should impact at 400 yards, assuming standard conditions. This reticle can come both in a donut, a traditional aiming point, and a chevron, which is the one I have, in both green and red. Trichicon also now offers the Primary Arms ACSS reticle, which is very similar but has some nice improvements. All zeroing is basically the same with ACOGs, line up the primary aiming point at 100 meters and zero to that. While the ACOG TA31 has one of the worst eye reliefs on the market, just over 1.5 inches, I actually find I prefer this as it gives the shooter a wider field of view with such a small package, which is probably one of my favorite features of this optic. More on that later. If eye relief is an issue, probably go with the TA11. With its 3.5 magnification, uh, it gives you 2.5 inches of eye relief, and that may be better for some. With this optic, you're getting extreme durability, great glass magnification in a lightweight package coming in just under 15 ounces. Now onto observations of my time using this optic. I've had this ACOG going on seven years now, with about 9,000 rounds underneath it, 6,000 of which is with this Daniel Defense rifle, which it sits on now. This thing is bomb-proof, as most people know. I've accidentally dropped it a thousand times off of the car, kicked it by accident, toppled the optic over, so on and so forth. It's obviously never lost zero. The fiber optic I found is nuclear bright. While useful for close-in work, it is annoying for any kind of precision work. A small amount of electrical tape solves this issue and I can just tear it off without any residue should I need to. The tritium is about what you would expect. Brighter than a TR-24, arguably useful in only a few niche scenarios, but it's still nice to have regardless and it's kind of cool. Anyways, 
Let's head inside for the tabletop. On to my opinion. As the title implies, the main thing I'd like to talk about is how the ACOG stacks up in 2020. There's no doubt in most people's minds that this is a exceptionally solid optic, and if you bought one, I'd have no concern that it'd serve you extremely well. After all, if any optic on the market could be called legendary, this would be the one with its extreme long-standing pedigree uh, in US Armed Forces. But even legends grow old and tired, so how does this hold up when compared to modern choices? After all, it's still a chunk of change. For a versatile do-it-all rifle, I think the age of the ACOG has come to an end. While it can certainly get the job done, there's no question about that, there are better options in the same price bracket with LPVOs, that is, optics that can go all the way down to 1x or all the way up to 4x or even higher, 6, 8, and now 10 with the Trigigon, or with the... Uh, the razor. These optics offer similar durability, though not as good, and much, much more versatility. Pairing the ACOG with an offset or with a piggybacked red dot, you can certainly get some versatility back, and it gets the job done. Uh, you, even gain you even gain the ability for passive night vision aiming, something that you can't do with an LPVO. As mentioned earlier, the ACOG has terrible eye relief. While not really an issue in most positions, Awkward shooting positions can crop up where you're trying to shoot off of a rock or something and can't get a solid stock um, position, resulting in semi-awkward shooting combined with the short eye relief, resulting in slower follow-ups and the occasional scoping of oneself. For me, however, this eye relief gives one of the best features of the optic, the massive apparent and actual field of view. What exactly do I mean by this? First off, the large lens at 32 millimeters results in a fairly large field of view on target. Combined with the short focal length, also known as eye relief, results in a much wider field of view because that's how lenses work. Uh, and this, ta this image takes up much more of your perceived vision, so there's a lot less blur on the side. So this, and the, the end result is you get an optic that is excellent as a scanning scope within the ranges of 4X where it is useful. You're more able to see more of the world at a time, with objects appearing bigger or more detailed because you're, they take up much more of your visual horizon. This is one of those things where you kind of have to see it to believe it, but I think most people that look into an ACOG comment on its very large, wide, apparent field of view, even though it's numerically not that much more than a normal scope. The end result is that, for me at least, this is my ideal 5.56 mountain gun. It's extremely compact and not bulky, like no offsets, whatever, so it's easy to sling. The BDC makes ranging and engaging targets out to range much easier because I have this configured properly for M855, or at least 62 grain and the proper length barrel. Uh, and first round hits are really easy with this. Granted, this may be my comfort with this setup, but whatever. The weight savings, uh, Combine the weight savings of the ACOG with my lightweight barrel, rail, and all that makes this a very lightweight package and that I can still engage out to very effective ranges with. Up close, this rifle's fine, as shown in the shooting footage. It's nothing fancy, and obviously it is slower than a red dot, but we're talking like half a second over the course of a six-second six drill or so. Really up close shooting in quote-unquote quote CQB, most of the shooting is quasi-instinctive shooting with last-second confirmations, which the ACOG can do fine. Not ideal, but not a game-breaker. It gets the job done. My only issue would maybe be small targets at around 25 to 40 yards in a quote-unquote dynamic environment. The zoom level is still high enough that I might end up slightly left or to the right of the target, but due to clutter, I'm not exactly sure where I'm at, meaning I would need to rescope on the target after checking uh, unzoomed. So, in closing... ACOG, a useful, versatile optic? Probably not. Probably get an LPVO. Useful mountain optic for a sniper setup? Probably not again. There are better reticles, more magnification, so on and so forth out there. Useful optic for a no-frills, lightweight 5.56 mountain gun that is still useful and effective in an urban environment? 
Yeah, I think so. Anyways, those are some brass facts for you about the ACOG. Hit me up in the comments if you have something you'd like me to review or have a question on. Hopefully, if I can find one, I should have a Strybog ready to roll within a couple weeks. Anyways, have a nice day.